What's up, party? Um, it, if you go live, I believe I can just go ahead and add you. Yo, yo, yo. So, yeah, if you go live, I believe I can invite you. Let's see here. What's up, guys? Today, we're going live with party finance and having a little just discussion. Just a little, you know what? I, I'm back. I just had to go do something real quick. Let's see here. Let's try to invite party over. Friends. What's up? What's up? What's going on today into the metaverse? What's up? Hopefully you guys are doing well today. We're going to go live with party finance here in a second. Hey, what's up? What's up, man? How are you? <laughs> Pretty good. How are you? Thanks for being the first co-host. I'm, I'm going to record this and throw it up on the YouTube after. But it's like I'm trying to make a little rhythm going. You know what I'm saying? No. A little bit. Yeah, it's always good to get into the flow of nice rhythm. Yeah, hundred percent, man. I see your setup behind you, dude. It's fucking legit. Yeah, it's kind of crazy. Damn, man. So, how yeah. how long did that take you to set up and get everything? Um, so I've had this particular setup for about uh, about three years now. Three years. Yeah, that's legit, man. Do you like do you like having all those monitors and like does it do you actually use all of them all the time? So. This, these two, like, I have my VPN on, so it's, like, straight up crypto only. Yeah. And then this is, like, all stocks and then, like, my TA for stocks and crypto. So it's also nice. two different devices. Like, sometimes, like, my main one could go down, so I'll have, like, a backup just in case. Yeah. So. That's awesome, dude. Is that what you, what, is that what you kind of be, uh, is that what you're doing on the daily is kind of, uh, what's, like, your daily routine? Yeah, so I wake up around, like, 4 or 5 in the morning. Depends on the day. Yeah, and then, like, I check the markets. Um, I have some bots running, so, like, I check how my bots are doing. Nice. Uh, crypto, and then I have a Discord, so I just, like, update my Discord. And then uh, I just get ready for the day. I work out in the morning, and then pretty much market should open 8, 8.30. So, so you're uh, central time? Yeah, central. Chicago? Uh, Houston. Got- Houston? Yeah. How do you like Texas? I like it. I was born and raised here. So it was, you were born and raised in Texas. Yeah. You go to school there too? Or how old are you? Because uh, I was just wondering that. I was reading your bio. It said eight years. So uh, I just wonder how old you are. 26. 26? Yeah. Right, so I you... went to college out here. Uh, U of H. University of Houston. University of Houston? You studied finance there? Finance and... Yeah, I did like business. I had like some like pre-law in there. And then I pretty much, I gra- I have a degree, but I haven't, like, used it, so. No, me neither, man. So, like, what a, got a Houston dude, nice. Yeah. I wish I was down in Texas. I'm in New York. New York's a little tough. New York's yeah. a little tough. What's, what's your real name? I, I was trying to find that this morning. I was like, I don't even, I, I'm just going to call you Party, I guess. Parthesh. No. What is it? Parthesh. Parthesh? Yeah. All right. Cool. 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 So like, that's what you've been doing full time for eight years, basically, or kind of uh part time or do you have another gig? Yeah. So I got into crypto about like eight years, like 2013, 2014. And then um, I made a good amount of money back in like 2015 because of crypto. And then like we had the run up in 2017. So I got into mining. Um, So I got into like mining pretty heavily. Right. And then 2018 i got into real estate so i own about like four rental properties now um, nice. thanks to crypto so yeah <laughs> what what are these rental properties looking like are they like multi-unit or are they just single so family? they're all single family right now um yeah just single family in houston i'm trying to get into commercial so that's like a goal for like next year so next year. how is managing a lot of properties i mean four properties you said single single family yeah, four. I have a fifth right now that I'm hopefully will be on the market before the year ends. So this is a great touch up right now. Um, right. hopefully that sell that managing not too big of a deal. It's four properties. Um, 
yeah, it's yeah. not really a big deal. So what what are you trying to grow it into? I want to get into commercial and then hopefully get um it depends what type of commercial. If I get like an apartment complex, right. that's still residential, but a lot more units. So we'll so see. What's, what's your goal? Like what what's your end game? Do you have an end game? <laughs> because like I, I wanna ask everybody what's their end game because it feels like even when you find if you have a goal and you meet it and then you always make another goal. Like I mean, I've met kind of my financial goal a little bit and I'm kind of searching on what's my next target type of deal. Yeah, I mean, I'm like five years ago, like I pretty much hit all my goals I really wanted to like already. So now I'm just trying to like just grow everything I have now, just even bigger. Like every year, just try to do double what I have, but double every year. <laughs> I mean, that's lofty, man. That's hard to do. Keep doubling. Yeah. For real estate, it is, but thanks to crypto, like I have it's a really good revenue stream for me. So, use uh, so how do you generate revenue using other? Than mining do you mine primarily or did you stop mining or do you generate revenue just by passive income in terms of like DeFi or interest rates on your digital assets or what how do you generate revenue yeah so with, with mining i would say that's like 20 percent of my income like 10 to 20 percent so okay. i use mining for like tax deductions because like okay. i do yeah so also real estate is great for tax deduction that's also why i'm more heavily right. in that so once you start making like a good amount of money, you'll start getting advice from tax advisors, CPAs on what you could do in certain industries to mitigate taxes for a later date. Right. So with mining, I can actually show you. I have a bunch of my old units here. Let's do so it. These are uh, my old ASICs. So this is like back in like 2015. Nice. I, ran, I, like, I think these are like 12 of them. So these cost me about 2500 a piece. At the right. time, and they were making about like 200 bucks a day for like a year straight. Nice. And then like I just upgraded and then I just have them sitting here. Damn. So, so you're, you're mining a little bit now. How, how many miners do you have now? Do you have ASICs? Yeah. So all ASICs, I have 35 S19 J pros. I think that's what they're called. Nice. I'm bit main. All right now. Are they primarily mining Bitcoin or are you mining other things? So throughout the day, like it's, I have like a special program. It could it picks which one, like whichever coin's profitable for the day, but it sells it to Bitcoin. So every day I'm getting paid out in Bitcoin, but it could Bitcoin. be my um, other various algorithms. Got it. Nice, dude. That's that's impressive, man. That's impressive. 2013 mining. What made you get in at tw in 2013? So I dove deep in like the crypto rabbit hole, right? So I was like, all right, I got, I have Bitcoin. I was like sending it. And then I was like, all right, like what actually ran the system? I got more into it. And then I heard about mining. So I jumped into ASIC mining early on. And I wish I started with GPU because at first, like with ASICs, it was just a pretty big money pit at the beginning. But now like, thanks to crypto, I can, uh, it's good for taxes. Let's just say that. <laughs> And and you said you did. Is that the only way you generate passive revenue with crypto, or are you doing other ways as well? So I do stake a little bit. I have some EOS coin. Like I'm pretty big in that. I've had it for like two years, so I do stake some of that here and there. So besides that, I just pretty much hold my crypto and then trade a nice stack. So trading, like what type of trading do you do? Is that like more day trading, swing trading, both combination, long term holding? combination at first i was like every day i needed like to find a play like multiple plays an hour but now it's like yeah. if i find a certain play like i'll take it um i'm more relaxed a lot more patient early on i was making a lot more risky moves and losing right. a lot so you kind of learn because like everyone has a different trading style like when i trade stocks i have like a couple buddies they only trade options and like i trade options here and there but not daily options so you just gotta so Oh, go ahead. Sorry. I was going to say, you just got to find something that works for you trading and then just stick with it. Right. So out of all these day traders out there, how many, how much, per, like, what is the percentage of them actually being set? How many are actually successful at day trading? Or, or would you say a higher percentage is more successful at swing trading than day trading? Um, obviously, I feel like there is a lot of fraudulent marketing via day trading going on out there 
And yeah. Yeah. How do you navigate? It really, so it really depends on the person, right? Um, and if you follow someone for a while, you'll see exactly what they're doing. Right. Because, it, I mean, that's a big thing out there. I mean, I've been following for you for a while. You're pretty, I mean, you don't call signals. I feel like people calling signals and having disc, paid Discord for signals and stuff like that. I I mean, there's a lot of red flags when it comes to day trade moguls. I actually kind of think it's, it's. Uh, I don't, I, I actually have a hard time believing anybody can day trade successfully, but that is just me personally. Um, yeah. obviously there is exceptions to my rule in my head, but, um, it's just, it's just hard to believe that anybody can outdo like algorithms and bots and, and hedge funds with a lot of analysts and stuff like that. Exactly. Like today, like I haven't made any trades. Like I'm just watching my portfolio. Right. Like this is what I do. It's like for stocks, I'm just watching what I own and yeah. crypto all red for the day. So yeah, it's, it's okay though. <laughs> we're, about, yeah. we're about to break out. I I think we're about to break out. Like Ethereum's testing all time highs, and it's looking pretty good. I think at least we'll see. We'll see. Yeah, though. currently in a like a Bitcoin long. So yeah, cool. yeah, hundred percent, man, hundred percent. So, uh, so you you're kind of in the passive mode. You're not stressing out too much about it. Like, uh, so you're not actively trading much at all. I feel like that's kind of the go go the go-to move for me as well it's kind of like i don't want to be looking at a screen all day <laughs> like i want to go do other shit you know so yeah it depends on the day like i know for the last like two weeks i've been taking it slow and then i'm about to go on vacation next week so i don't want to be in too many big positions so like, right and then it's like the year's ending too so i'm strapping in for like next year so i'll start deploying more capital like middle of january so right yeah. so Every year since like 2017, uh, we saw a big capitulation in the crypto market pretty much at the end of the year because of people selling to pay taxes. Do you think that's going to be a similar scenario for this end of the year or uh, are you thinking about that whatsoever? Yeah, I have. That's why I'm like I'm a little bit cash, like uh, tether heavy a little bit. We'll see what happens. Tether. So you're holding tether then? <laughs> well, I, I trade it. like Binance. Right. So. Yeah, I see. So uh, your bots, what are the, their like strategies, more or less? So I have like a special indicator it uses like harmonic patterns. So it just finds different harmonic patterns um, across. So right now it's on Binance and Coinbase. So like any altcoin that they're running, it just finds patterns in the charts, like five minute and 15 minute. And it just basically trades off of uh, Elliott yeah. Wave. So, Is this an open source bot or something you built? So some of it is like I've taken from other bots, but uh, I have a developer um, that I've been working with for like two years. But he does most of it. Yeah. So what's the agreement between you and that developer? Are you just like, so what's the incentive for a developer to give away his bot or like get paid to, if it's a successful bot, he's incentivized not to give it to anybody, right? For the most part, unless unless it's more lucrative to do so. Yeah, so with me and him, like, I guess I paid him initially on, like, we worked together on this. Okay. Like, idea. So, yeah, I pretty much funded it, and then that's that. So Right, so you put down the initial capital, boom, yeah. boom, boom, good to go. Interesting. Yeah, it's it's hard to find, like, good part, like, a good, good people out there to work with. It's hard to work with people if you, especially over the internet, I don't know. Yeah. I've just had a hard time finding people that align with what we're trying or what I'm trying to do and like finding uh, incentives that work for both of us, you know. Do you have you had a similar experience or you you uh, find it pretty easy to find people to work together over the Internet? I feel like on the Internet, after you like you follow someone for like even like two weeks, you can kind of see if they're like bullshitting you or not. Oh, right, right. Totally, man. So you can like a lot easier. So yeah, hundred yeah. percent. So how's your be... for sure? Sorry, like... <laughs> we're talking over each other. I guess this is kind of hard, but you know, yeah. So what is your Discord like? Is your dis Discord pretty active? And like, uh, are you making yeah, calls? So... 
I don't really promote it, but like if anyone like follows me, like they'll click the the bio and um pretty much I just do what I'm like the plays I'm in, right? What I'm looking at, new DeFi projects, if any, uh, new altcoins if I'm yeah. interested in. And it's a good think tank because like they pretty much call out a bunch of stuff I'm not even looking at. So uh-huh. yeah. my eyes fresh instead of me looking at the same stock or cryptos over and over again. Yeah, hundred percent. I mean, di- di- like my Discord's filled with <laughs> just people. Crypto's growing so fast; it's hard to keep up with everything. All the new yeah. DeFi projects, all the new innovation, and how they're getting utilized It's nuts. Absolutely nuts. Are you into any DeFi plays, or like, are you looking into DeFi at all? And 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 uh, in which way are you doing so? If if so, yeah. So there's a new D- DeFi like a uh, platform called depot the depot.io and the depot. i yeah so i invested pretty heavily like a month ago and i believe it was like a hundredth of a penny and like currently it went to like 11 cents so like i did extremely well on that project no so you you primarily it sounds like what i'm getting is you primarily trade or like look for price appreciation type of deal rather than um maybe utilizing the protocol yeah so mostly like my income comes from trading like the actual like token and stuff i do research right like, so i did a lot of research on like this DeFi project and like i like what they were doing so like, i right. bought their i bought their token and then hopefully in the future they come out with staking and i'll probably stake a little bit of it so nice so for uh as a trader uh have you thought about using like a decentralized like a dydx like a decentralized leverage trading platform or do you leverage trade at all on your centralized exchanges i know it's kind of uh maybe you have to use a vpn to use type of deal but <laughs> uh yeah do you, do you do that at all or no or yes yeah, like, so like margin trade crypto on bitmex so now i do it on bybit and binance.com so VPNs on both of them. And you have to have like a KYC account for Binance. So I luckily I have access to a KYC account. Damn. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, that's kind of why New York is tough because New York, you need a bit license. So yeah. New York, you can't use Celsius. You can't use um, like all these, all these uh, like centralized APY services where you can earn interest on your digital assets. So I've been heavy into DeFi because New York doesn't allow anything except DeFi you can use because you just link your digital wallet to, to it and you utilize it. So I that's kind of why I'm so big on DeFi is because it's my only option, you know? So, but, um, yeah. Yeah, I like DeFi a lot. Uh, there's a lot of use cases for it, especially in, like, the rest of the world. So A hundred percent. And, like, uh, financial products to everybody, every uh, every person in the entire world basically no matter who you are no matter where in, where in the world no matter yeah. if your current currency is inflating beyond belief what do you think what's the future for the united states dollar you think i don't know i feel like once they go digital it's gonna be pretty funny like what they do because right. i feel like that's gonna happen pretty soon so right i don't know like the cbdc yeah like the cbdc yeah but uh, in terms of like, do you think, for example, it will hold the reserve currency status of the world? I think it will just because like the U, like, I guess the world depends on the U.S. economy, right? In a way. So, right. But for now, um, I guess it will. But I, 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 I tend to agree. So. How about, is it the Chinese, uh, what's the Chinese currency? The yen, is it? I don't know. Yeah, the yen or one. I think one is, I don't know, to be honest. I don't know either. <laughs> but do you think their, like, their currency is going to ever out, uh, outpace the United States? Or do you have any opinions on that whatsoever? I don't think so. I feel like the U.S. economy is going to hold it down. But uh, we'll see. So the happens. yen is Japan. So it might be the yuan. The yuan then, yeah. Yeah. So it's too fall. Let's see if we got some questions in the. Let's see. Any questions? Shoot them in the comments. I'll uh, go ahead and we'll talk about it. 
Let's see. How how profitable is mining currently? So it depends like what... on the type of miners you have. So I have a uh, Bitmain miners, and the ones I have actually produce. I think today it's like ninety dollars a day. So it's ninety dollars a day. Yeah. What's the electric? What's your like electrical bill on that? So I can give you the numbers. Um, profit. I last month I made like fifteen thousand. Electricity cost me thirty six hundred. Um, other utilities and stuff, another like three thousand. So I got pocketed about like forty percent of what I made. Got it. And we got a question: Is like why is mining good for taxes? Is just basically writing off your electrical bill and uh, what other expenses can you write off? And maybe so other things. I- is pretty big so like I, I pretty much write off a whole house um so the whole house is a write-off everything internet like i have a company car right so like i'm going to different stores getting like stuff so it, you get a talk to the cpa but there's a lot of tax right. benefits store. so so you're how many how much revenue do you have to generate to be considered a crypto mining business like can we just revenue generate like k via miners and be write all this stuff off for tax purposes or so you would have to have like a good amount of like i think it's like more than like twenty thousand dollars worth of equipment and then because what i'm doing it's like a couple hundred thousand dollars so, got it yeah like just um i think it was last october i bought about 35 new asics and that cost me about a half a million so they're oh, wow. pretty expensive yeah so but well, they're all I'm upgrading my equipment as well. So nice. So you bought them last year during the COVID. Yeah. During COVID, the height of COVID. Yeah, pretty much. So was there? There was a shortage going on during that time, or no? Yeah, there was a lot, especially with GPUs. But I luckily, like, I've been mining, buying miners directly with Bitmain, so I kind of have like a go-to person. So there you go. Sounds yeah. like you got a lot of ins, man. Sounds like you got in with the bots. You got in with the miners. You got the in with the, I don't know if you said the real estate, but. Yeah, real estate I'm getting more into for sure in the next like two, three years. So so how's the real estate, real estate market? Did you say you were in Houston? Yeah. yeah. Houston been popping, right? Yeah, it's on fire. So the current deal that I'm about to like list on the market, it actually took me two years to find like pretty much when COVID started, I was trying to find another spot because I already had um, three previous places. Right. So I'm looking for a spot. Everything was getting outbid 20, 30%. And like I was a cash buyer too. So like I was willing to close immediately and still getting outbid. And I wasn't about to pay 30% over because my goal was right. to renovate and then make the 10, 20% not keep it. So I finally found one, and I've been renovating it for about four months, and it's about to be finished, I think, over the next two weeks. So that will be on the market. Nice, dude. So we got another question is, like, uh, any advice for taking out loans? Did you take out a loan to start your original mining business, and do you still have a lot of loans? So with mining, I was in a bunch of, like, discords early on this was like in 2014 and like a bunch of forums and i found a business partner he was in california and his electricity cost was insane to run the miners and my cost was like it was like six cents and his was like 26 cents to run so we pretty much partnered up and he would he shipped me out like 10 units i had 10 units so like we were partners for a while we made a bunch of money in crypto and we just started growing our mining operation no loan on that. And then for real estate right now, I have pretty much, I own all equity in it. No loans. No so, loan. So you can't leverage yourself with property whatsoever. All cash offer. All, of all cash. But I'm trying to get into commercial. So I'm probably going to like port, like manage, put all my uh, houses in a portfolio and then leverage that. So, yeah, I'm about to say, like, I, personally, I would definitely refinance them because, I mean, interest rates are so low. It's just like, man. Yeah. Yep. It's just like, man, let's see if we got any other questions. Very cool, dude. I did not know you had all these uh, ways to generate revenue. It's freaking nuts, man. So how many, so, like, how many ways are you generating revenue? Just, uh, like, put a number on it. 
You got the guess, bots. You... Real estate, mining, bots. I put bots in like crypto and mining kind all in like yeah one category. Right. But I guess the bots because like it runs twenty four seven. But I do just check on it once a day, see how it's going. Same thing with real estate. I mean, that's pretty easy. If anything happens, so I get like a text from the tenants or something, and then I, uh, I have a contractor. I send him over there if anything does happen, so that doesn't take too long. Nice. Do you have a wife and kids, or are you are you still single? <laughs> no, single. I'll probably be single for a while. Damn, man. Why is that? You kind of like being a single guy, or? Yeah, I just I'm always doing something and like just on to the next like thing. So are you trying not yes. say that again? I'm sorry I missed that. Just trying to focus on like all my companies right now and like grow those. Right. <laughs> so say um say where where are you when you are just content? Are you trying to build like an empire or are you trying to like, okay, now I'm at a place where I'm content and want to settle down or maybe you don't want to settle down and you want to travel or like, what's your end goal? I mean, I, I don't think we ever settled on an end goal for you, I guess. Yeah. My end goal, I guess my or end goal would have... be like to retire on an Island, right? My own personal Island. <laughs> right. So that would be a bad. <laughs> Your own? Are you building this island, or are you just going to find one that's already there? <laughs> because I feel like probably find one and upgrade it. <laughs> upgrade it. There you go. Yeah. So, what age are you retiring on this island? Epstein vibes. Somebody says Epstein vibes. So, are you going to buy Epstein's? <laughs> Hopefully, before forty or like by forty. Nice yeah. man. Nice. Yo, that's awesome. I could retire now if I really wanted to, but uh, yeah, I want to build a lot more. So, yeah. So that's crazy. So by 40, you want an island, which probably got a yacht as well, and maybe even a helicopter. <laughs> yeah. So probably, yeah. You pro- probably need a yacht before an island, wouldn't you say? Yeah. And then I think I need a helicopter <laughs> before the yacht. And then a helicopter before the yacht. So that means you got to have a landing pad as well somewhere. So you gotta get you gotta get going, man. That's tough. I feel like <laughs> that's a large goal. What's your monthly expenses on an island yacht and helicopter? You think? Depends on the <laughs> size of all of them. <laughs> yeah, that's true, man. That's true. Maybe it'll be cheaper for a heli- or like a, you'll probably have flying cars or some shit by in twenty years. Tesla working on a helicopter, but I did see that. Man. I did see that. I mean, that's that's awesome. That would be nuts. Yeah. I, are you excited for uh, driverless cars? Yeah, I think so. I think I think that'll be pretty fun. Yeah, just hop in a car and keep working while you're getting getting to a from A to B or whatever. Yeah, yeah. I feel like that will like increase so much pro- productivity if you can just work while traveling. <laughs> I feel like that's nuts. Let's yep. see, especially with the digital age now, like. You can work from anywhere, so yeah. So, what's what do you do on your free time? Like, uh, for example, uh, obviously you probably enjoy working and building, but like other than building things, what what do you enjoy doing? So, I have a dog. I have a French bulldog. Uh, two years right. so keeps me busy, and then I have a bunch of hobbies. Uh, I just got a new Jeep, so I've just been like buying a bunch of stuff to add to my Jeeps. Uh, Cars and then I guess just hang out with friends. Hang out with friends, yeah. I feel like over the last year where, or year and a half, what it's almost two years now since COVID started. I feel like people really stopped hanging out as much as they used to. Less parties, less going to a bar. At least I've been trying to actually focus on going out and hanging out with hanging out with friends and family even more. But I feel like a lot of people haven't. Have you or been hanging yeah, out with pretty, a, you know, like more? a bunch of friends stay in more? Nice, so, nice, yeah. nice. So we got a comment saying um, a Jeep just empty your entire pockets, LOL. <laughs> so On you gas, just dropped, yeah. There you go, man. There you go. Did you see that somebody just bought a NFT of a yacht for $650,000? I did, yeah. How do you feel about that? 
<laughs> pretty crazy. I mean, I have a couple NFTs myself. I I dabble in that space. So, you do. so yeah. what NFT are you holding, or are you? So recently, I bought a bunch of the Wall Street bets. They had like a bunch of bulls uh, that I released. So I bought a bunch of bulls, and then so I actually have real art. So like I have a, I'll show you. I have a Banksy up there. Cool. <laughs> And then a couple, like, Cleon Peterson pieces, so all around. So, like, I do have, like, limited edition art, and that's, like, a tiny Andy Warhol. So. Oh. And yeah. some Playboy. Yeah, some, like, Finance Wall Street. Nice. <laughs> 1989, and then that's, like, ni- 2004. Damn. <laughs> nice, man. <laughs> that's awesome. So, are you trying to get like a digital frame where you can uh, showcase these NFTs? Yeah, so I actually ordered one. Uh, it's pretty cool. I found it on TikTok. Uh, it's like a little, it's like an like iPad type of display. So yeah, it would be neat. I think it gets released this month, so that'll be cool. That's awesome, man. Yeah, I definitely want to get one for myself. Yeah, I, that would be that would be dope. I think that's definitely the future. Just digital, like you can have your. Uh, nft on your watch your shirt like digital uh nft like merch is going to be huge adidas is getting into uh like the board apes and the uh, punks yeah. and i would not be surprised if they put those suckers on shoes or like sh- merch or whatnot i mean it's going to be nuts so we'll yeah, see for- cool. yeah um so other than the Wall Street bets. You have any other NFT projects that you are holding, or so there's like a couple artists uh, I found in the space early on. So I have a bunch of like their work. One's called JR Art Space. Nice. So yeah, Perfect. he has a bunch of stuff. And then like I watch what whales buy. So like there's like a couple whales that have like a couple billion dollars portfolio and just like random NFTs. So like I try to scoop up here and there some right. of pieces. Dude, NFT space, man, it's it's getting a little sketchy, man. It's hard to navigate. It's hard to navigate, and I think it's oversatur- oversaturized a lot. And same with the metaverse. What do you think about the metaverse? Or, like, where do you think that's headed? Yeah, so everyone's saying, oh, like, the metaverse is going to become, like, the next big thing. Uh, I don't really think it will. Because, like, we still, like, the, we still have, like, reality, right? Like, there's still a lot of stuff that happens in the day-to-day that people just can't go into the metaverse and do. So, uh-huh. I think it has a place for sure. It is like a stepping stone for the future, but uh, I think that still has like three to five years to go before I get the next step up. Sorry, man. (laughs) Uh, I think I think we're definitely definitely on the same page. I think we're a little early for the metaverse, and I think a lot of these projects are a little uh, not fun to play. Like the metaverse has to be like in, in fun to be in like Decentraland. I've been playing around for with Decentraland for years and I just, I don't, I don't go in Decent. It has like 2000 active users. Yeah. Like at any given time, there's only 2000 people roaming Decentraland. And there's, I mean, it's kind of, I don't know. I don't know. I don't see it. I think it's kind of like Airbnb and, if it came out in 2000 or something or like uber if it came out in 2000 like it's just too early for its time i think but that's just my so so are you thinking about airbnb at all since we're talking about where i brought that up for like my real estate yeah uh so i thought about it i was thinking about getting like a condo in this high rise but that high rise is actually like they don't allow airbnbs so oh if I find the right place, and I would probably do one, just test it out. Test it out. Yeah. Yeah. So you obviously know Cena Dean. I feel like I've seen you guys go live a lot. Yeah, yeah, he does. Like I know he had a bunch of Airbnbs in the past. So. Yeah. Uh huh. He's. I was talking to him one time about how he went about it. He's like the, the thing. The way I should have went about it was I should have rented. I should have rented a lot of locations and then did that for a year and try to sublease it through Airbnb or sub uh, rent it out through Airbnb and see and kind of like gather day gather data and then decide which ones I wanted to maybe try to buy. But yeah. I mean, I feel like for me, I wanted to get into real estate a little bit, but at the same time, 
It's like I can either earn 30% on my stable coins or I can use those stable coins and buy real estate, which kind of seems like a hassle when I'm earning 30% on my stables. I don't know. I just feel like that's just way too easy to take my money out of or take whatever I need out of, right? Yeah, so in August is when I bought this. Uh, it was a townhouse I bought. So I bought it for 160000 So I cashed out crypto, right? If I left that one sixty in crypto, that would have probably been like over half a million. <laughs> right. Right. Just because, uh-huh. like, so, yeah. And like at the time, like I, that, I knew what I was doing. So I was like, yeah, if the market goes up, it's fine. Like I'm diversifying my assets. So you have always, you have to look at your portfolio, your risk and see what you're comfortable doing. So at the time, like I was, I was fine with what I did. Right. So you're kind of actively like de-risking a little bit. Yeah, anytime like I make a certain amount in crypto, I just scale out a little bit and then go into like other asset classes. All right. So what's your after you got real estate, you got uh, obviously crypto and then some art type of deal. Is there any other asset classes you're going into other than an, uh, a yacht and an island? <laughs> <laughs> For now, no. I am trying to build, like, I guess, a couple of crypto, like, startups, I guess. Yeah. All yeah tell stuff. me about, if you mind. Just, like, platforms. Like, you can connect all your wallets, and you can, like, see everything. Like, because crypto is, like, everything scattered around, right? You got to keep track of, like, multiple different things. So, yeah. if you have, like, buy for, like, everything, I think <laughs> they can, like, glance over real quick. That'll be pretty cool. So, there's already no, some it's... out there that are pretty nice, but... I feel like I could make a better one. <laughs> there you go. No, I totally agree. I, I recently started doing my taxes and like doing all my, I'm mad into DeFi, man, and doing taxes. And I have like over probably 5,000 transactions and uh, in my, in a, across probably 10 different digital wallets. And I uploaded it to like a tax software and it like a kind of, uh, aggregated all my capital gains and a lot of the transactions came in on as er- errors because they didn't know what the hell I did and I have to go back and look through all the transactions and figure out what the hell I did so next year I'm definitely going to I had the same issue with with it last year it wasn't as bad so and then I just didn't do it again this year but I definitely have to change it up for next year because this is going to be ridiculous um yeah, it gets crazy for sure, especially like all the random DeFi stuff and fucking, everyone does it. <laughs> it's fucking nut. But um, yeah, so let's see if we got any other questions. Still early. My Fed. So what's your stock portfolio looking like, if you mind me asking? Like, what's your largest holdings for in, in the stock? So for right now, it's Boeing. I think Boeing. under 200. Yeah, I like defense companies, so I like Boeing. Even though, like, they're lazy, they're slow. Uh, Boeing, Baba's been killing me all year. Damn. Like, yeah, so like, I've been trading it, but uh, my current position, I'm down, like, 14%. Damn. So, yeah, not too bad. So I guess, like, Apple, it's, like, tech companies, pretty much. Tech and then Facebook. It's, like, fintech. Yeah, fintech. How about cyber security? Anything in cyber security or no? Not at the moment, but that air that area is huge, and that it's gonna blow up. That whole yes, industry, freaking huge, man! It's yeah. it's like the focus of the United States military right now. Right now, I'm an yeah. MI officer, and dude, I like it's it's like one of the top priorities of it, of the military yeah. right. Now is cybersecurity and they're using a lot of contractors to do that. So it's freaking nuts. Yeah. But do you have any sales? Do you guys have any sales experience? Have you, do you have any sales experience? No, me neither. Nope. <laughs> I did work for like, I guess like back in like I finished high school and I got a job and it was like selling makeup and you would like go around like pretty much like door salesman but i did that for like a week and i'm like yeah this is, i'm not doing this <laughs> with makeup did you have yeah, to wear so, them? <laughs> at, no <laughs> at the time like the pro usually it was like flashlights with ta- tasers or, like whatever 
twenty dollar item, and at the time right. that week it was like a makeup bag. I'm like, yeah, I'm not doing this. <laughs> yeah, Mary Kay was it Mary Kay? No, it was pretty much like a no brand, like a a random brand you can make, and then they were just like hustling that product for the week. Uh, I see. I yeah. see. One of those triple uh, level marketing things. MLS types, yeah. So yeah. <laughs> Do you hold any like gold or hard assets? So I did buy a bunch of like physical silver and then uh, my buddy wanted it. So I just get sold it to him. I'm like, so, really? Yeah. Cause I had it for a while and I'm like, it's not really doing much. Like I could have put this money in crypto or stocks and like made it right. a lot more. So it depends at the time. Like I don't have a problem with it, but at the moment I don't own any. Right. So. Yeah, I'm kind of in the same boat. I I don't see, I don't. I honestly kind of agree. Did Elon Musk say that we will be mining like uh, commodities on asteroids, like gold and silver and all the valuable commodities? Well, not all, like obviously not like corn and shit, but like uh, the the hard <laughs> currencies, like the the what I don't even know the word for it, valuable currencies or assets. I don't know yeah. what. I think I saw about that i think i saw like the winklevoss twins talk about right. like elon but, mine they gold yeah. like in space or yeah something. That, that was with dave portnoy <laughs> I, yeah <laughs> oh, they're pretty and interesting was, like, are you nuts what are you saying right now <laughs> uh dude it's it's kind of funny to see winklevoss and like uh zuckerberg still duke it out even after all that controversy with facebook like uh, yeah. like Winklevoss might be end up richer than Zuckerberg. Who knows? Yeah, that's for sure. So I heard I read an article that CZ of Binance is actually worth like ninety billion dollars secretly. So and if that's true, he's like one of the, like, the tenth richest person. So right. that's great. Yeah. CZ, a little sketchy. He's a sketchy character. <laughs> he's uh, tied in with Tether a little bit. And tether sketchy. Oh yeah, Te- every time I go through like the tether rabbit hole, it's just it's crazy. It's sketchy, man. It's it's that's kind of like the black swan event waiting to happen in crypto. Even though, yeah. I I don't know, I don't know. They're backed by a lot of Chinese bonds. Like ever is it ever Grande? They Much have, of like- a backed by, but like every time I dig down deep, I'm like, dude, this is about to collapse. Like last oh. year. <laughs> I, I know for sure. It, yeah. I, I think they just printed another billion dollars like uh, right after Thanksgiving or right before Thanksgiving, like out of nowhere. Like, I, I don't think anything's back in that. I, it's just nuts. It's nuts. But we'll see what happens. Yeah. So do you do you uh, have you thought about becoming like a validator for proof of stake networks or are you just uh, wanting to stake those assets with another validator? So I've thought it for like for some of the cryptos like i run some master nodes so like i guess i validate some transactions and i get paid out like a yield so mm. and how much oh, and what master like what network are you validating for for those nodes a dash master node i have one of those a dash Ooh, interesting man <laughs> i haven't heard of like i haven't looked at dash in a while man yeah actually i haven't looked at it you need a thousand coins to run a dash master node nice yeah well that's doing all right for you then i think it's all right yeah but yeah there's a lot in the day so i just had a bunch of it so like all right might as well turn the miner on or the master node yeah 100 percent, 100 percent, man let's see what's your uh, i i can't ask him that never mind a lot of like a lot of uh what's your monthly expenses what's your net worth type of questions i'm just like i'm not I, we don't need to get into that it's just like that's private so uh how does he manage his tether risk so you risk like holding tether i guess yeah because i do hold a lot of tether. <laughs> so i mean i've known like at any moment, like, I know something could happen. So hopefully, like, I have – I could get to, like, my brokerage and do what I need to in time. But uh, right. it is a risk. Like, yeah, like, I'm taking that risk, too. It's holding tether. 
So, hundred percent, man, hundred percent. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely a risk that a lot of people kind of just ignore. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> what it is, but. So, you just live with you and your dog, basically. Yeah, just me and my dog. So for now. Are you in in a nice part part of Houston, or like yeah, uh, cool. So not too bad. So is close it to it down? It's getting cool right now. I'm about to go to Colorado this week, so that's gonna be fun. Oh, that's what I was meaning to ask you. You said you were going on vacation. Do you are you going skiing? Yeah, I'm actually going snowboarding for a week with my brother and like some friends. So. That sounds like so much fun, man. Yeah. Where are you going in uh, Colorado? Denver? Uh, Copper Mountain. Copper Mountain. Two hours from Denver. Nice. Yeah. Nice. What, uh, so like going through college, what was your, like, what was your goals when you didn't have, say, all the, all the revenue streams when you, as you do now? Like, what, what was your, uh, idea of what your future looked like when you were younger? So pretty much going in, like I wanted to do like business and then like, I was always like in stocks. I was like doing finance and then law intrigued me a lot. So I got into like the finance law aspect, but then I was like, I'm not trying to work for corporate America or work for anybody period. So I was like, I just need to find something that I like, I'm passionate about. Like I, I can make a lot of money and I got into crypto really early on and that actually helped help fund what i do now a lot so right yeah it's all thanks to crypto for the most part yeah man i mean crypto is kind of where <laughs> how i got to where i am today as well i mean it's 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 definitely one of the greatest like wealth transfer vehicles of our generation and yeah. just i feel bad for the people that can't see it you know <laughs> like i have a lot of family friends how have you convinced any of your family and friends to get into it? You probably have them all convinced by this point, right? Or no? Yeah. So early on, like I would tell them what I'm doing. So when I talked, when I got into mining and like, so I invested a lot of money, uh, money into mining, like a couple hundred thousand dollars in the beginning. Yeah. No one knew what I was doing. Like they're like, "What are you buying computers? And you're, you need how much electricity? Like what's going on?" So at first, right. they thought just like some crazy thing like internet money like it's all crap but then like i guess over time like people would talk about it the news would keep talking about it and especially in the last two years when covid happened like the media like every day bitcoins in their in their mouth so it's getting out there a lot more so now they trust so yeah dude i mean so so you're saying your your family's pretty big on it or do they have a large holdings as well or is it just you or you're like so, your friend. Well, I guess me and my brothers. My parents don't have any. Um, if they do, oh, really? it's like, uh, yeah. I mean, they, I, it they don't. Really, yeah. yeah. It's hard to come. It's hard to. It's hard to like. I don't know. Um, I do have a bunch of like family members. They're like, yeah, hey, like I want to put some money in crypto, and they're like telling like these big amounts of numbers. I'm like, just wait for a bear market, and then just start right. deploying. That's what I was telling them throughout 2018 and 2019. And the only one that listened was my mom. And now my dad's pissed because my mom's got like more of a retirement account than my dad. <laughs> my dad's yeah. pissed off about it. But it's just funny, man. And it's, it's, it's definitely tough because it's like they're uninterested until it's not time to be interested anymore. Like right now is not the greatest time to be getting into crypto, in my opinion, at least. I don't know about you. Yeah, no, same thing. Like I... Even now, I say just wait till like the bear market and then start deploying. Right. If you're trying to like deploy a lot, just wait. Um, yeah, hundred percent. So, how do you exit and enter the market? Like, what's your? Do you kind of just? Obviously, it depends on what your objective is. If it's like a long term hold or like a trade, but like uh, for example, if you're trying to accumulate a position for like a long term hold or something. I'm trying to accumulate, like, okay, for instance, for Boeing, like, it's under 200. So, if it goes down closer to, like, 160, I'll buy a lot more. So, right now, I'm just accumulating some Boeing. Because I feel like I, that could double within the next two years. So, that's one of my long-term plays for now. I kind of want to have about 20% of my net worth 
into Boeing. And Boeing. Yeah, at one point. <laughs> yo, yo, are you gonna be on the? Are you gonna be on the board of representatives or what? Or like <laughs> with the amount yeah, of I share? I don't think I have that much. <laughs> I know I'm just, but um, but why? Why do you want so much in one one stock? Is there a reason? Just because you believe in it so much? Yeah, I just like the company a lot, and they're not going away on soon. Yeah, like yeah, it's just one of those companies that like if anything happens, like there's just gonna be a government check getting written to them, and then everything's fine. So, <laughs> yeah. Let's see. Somebody says diversify with Airbus. Why do you think Boeing is a lot better than Airbus, or do you have an opinion on that? <laughs> I just like defense companies and like Boeing kind of like takes like all, like it has a bunch of stuff going on. So I just like, yeah. Nice dude. Nice. Project. Let's see. You're a 26, you said? Yeah, 26. Yeah, you're, I mean, you're pretty fucking young still. So, I mean, I'm 20, 23, so I'm pretty young too. So, but, um, three more years in crypto, it's gonna be crazy yeah. for you. <laughs> well, we'll see. And I mean, it's, yeah, it's been, been a ride so far. So, I'm, I'm pretty grateful for everything. I mean, it, when you, uh, like when you say when you started having a few money, did that affect your you at all, like uh, emotionally and morally, or like did it change you in any aspect? Like I assume you have a few money. It sounds like it. I mean, I, I hate to yeah, assume. Yeah, not really, because like I mean, early on I was like pretty reckless with stuff I was doing. So like now I like I'm a lot more mature and stuff. Plus I hang out with a lot more older people. So yeah, yeah, yeah. All my reckless yeah. days are pretty much over with. <laughs> Except with your Jeep, I guess. Yeah, I do spend a lot of money on, like, random <laughs> random stuff around my house. <laughs> All right. Is it is it true that every Jeep driver waves to each other when they drive by? So, funny thing, <laughs> that actually happened to me, like, three times. I've owned this Jeep for, like, a month now. So, right. I think that's a, that's a yes. Damn, they need to come out with a Jeep NFT and give it to all the Jeep owners so they can all be like <laughs> butt buddies. <laughs> so apparently with Jeeps, like you get a duck. It's called like getting ducked. And they put like a rubber ducky on your Jeep. So that's like a thing apparently. So Really? Damn. Yeah. We'll see about that. Do you go uh, like uh somebody asked Gator or Rubicon? Uh, I got a Mojave uh Gladiator. Gladiator. Yeah. Oh wait, is that the pickup truck? Yeah. You did? Damn. Yeah. How do you, I do you like that? Rubicon. I like it. It's been fun. I like it. Nice dude. What fundamentals do you look look for when you're investing in something? Obviously Boeing, you it sounded like you looking for like government connections, I guess. Is there anything else? In like maybe tech stocks, it might be different, or is it is it the same? I guess. So with tech stocks, mostly like what like what the uh, like what are they doing? What type of tech is it? Like the user base, like is their user base growing? Stuff like that. Like three years ago, I invested into like Snapchat when uh, I think Kylie Jenner was like talking crap, and then like the stock plummeted. So like I started buying that up, and I saw their user growth on the app go up, and then. On the platform itself, you see all like all these ads coming in. So if there's a bunch of ads on the platform, they're making a lot of money. And in the last two years, Snapchat has done amazing. So I started exiting my position on that. But I think Snapchat's pretty good if you can buy on a dip. There you go. It's the Snapchat. So cool, 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 cool. So Boeing and Snapchat. And then EOS and Bitcoin mining, <laughs> the assets that you're in, and and Dash. Is there Dash. A, like that uh, another DeFi project? But other than like, are you big on any layer ones other than like EOS? I know EOS is a layer one, like a uh, smart contract blockchain. But I don't think EOS has seen a lot of success compared to other layer ones. Yeah, not much. It's pretty much been like, like pretty much being lazy. But uh, 
I know uh, Peter I Thiel, he's building a platform and he's been like holding a bunch of EOS for some reason. Interesting. Just, yeah, so like I'm just I'm holding on to mine for that reason, whatever that could be. <laughs> yeah. That is interesting. I did not know that, man. I did yeah. Who who are your idols, man? Like uh investing idols, maybe like uh who do you listen to? Is it uh Dave Portnoy <laughs> or I mean he's he's somebody to look up to a little bit, you know? Yeah, um, I mean for sure. Um I watch I watch all like I guess finance podcasts and then I make my own judgment. So like I watch pretty much everything when I do have time for it. Right. And make your own judgment in finance because it's always good to have like to know every like get everyone's opinion and then just go on what you think is best for your portfolio. Dude, I'm hundred percent, man. Dude, party! This has been hell- a lot of fun, man. <laughs> I mean, I did not know everything you did, and I I definitely think getting in touch with all the crypto TikTokers and the finance TikTokers and like kind of like making a network, um, is is very powerful, man. And I'm I'm happy you were the first one to really do this and and uh, i guess uh decide to jump on with me for an hour straight and just chit chat yeah no this was great and i'm pretty honored to be your first one <laughs> first uh, bro, I, yo honored i'll take that i'll take that <laughs> oh yeah man um it, well any uh any last things any uh, like recommendation podcast recommendations maybe books if you read much i don't know if you read much but or uh, reading much i just like free like what's going on with the crypto like the current Damn. news stuff. so i mean every day it's like a hundred different news articles coming in so Dude, 100. for sure for yeah, sure just, i would just say just watch the news current news for sure and then just do a lot of research on like whatever you're trying to learn if you're trying to learn trading there's a lot of trading different trading styles too so some might not work for everyone so yeah not, a lot of trial and error for sure in this industry. Yeah, trading trading is trading stuff. I, I was unsuccessful. I might be salty. That's my might be my reason why I'm a, I'm a little salty because I, I tried to trade for like a year and I was an unsuccessful. So I might just be salty so about trading. <laughs> but no, totally. Um but I appreciate it, uh party man. It was a pleasure yeah. having you on. Uh we you. will have to do it again, man. Sweet, thank you for having me. And no problem. Peace out. Later. Dude, that was hella fun, man. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that. Um, Any uh, final questions, any thoughts to improve? Because I will be having everybody, every crypto TikToker on, Dingle Crypto live streams. That was fun, man. He's an interesting dude, to say the least. Um, Any any suggestions? Hopefully, guys, Quantum VR... Uh, um, I'm not talking price right now, guys. I just wanted to know how you guys think that went. Any, uh, maybe any improvements? Um, tomorrow I'll be on once again talking solo. And but, all right, guys. If you don't have any uh, comments on that, I appreciate you guys tuning in. Hella fun. Go follow Party Finance. He's very young and successful, and he's definitely a person to listen to, or maybe just uh accumulate your opinions off of no problem i know i know that was dope thank you guys loved it man thanks no problem guys i appreciate you guys tuning in until next time next guest will be another fucking cool ass guy or cool ass girl you know will you do more collaborations absolutely that's one of my goals keep up thank you thank you all right guys have a fantastic thursday i will see you tomorrow peace out